What's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fazzy Fitness. So let's start this video with the update of Hunter Labrada at 9 weeks out of Italy Pro. So the Olympia predictions have started to come out and some people are kind of skeptical whether they should put guys like Hunter Labrada or Andrew Jack in there. But I have to say unless both these guys mess up big time at their upcoming shows which by the way is highly unlikely there isn't gonna be anyone out there stopping them from winning these shows and getting their Olympia qualification. So I think it is gonna be so great to see a newer and a bigger version of Hunter on the stage, especially after what we have seen from him throughout this offseason and the kind of conditioning that he was holding even at the peak point of his offseason. So last year at Tampa Pro, we saw that Hunter is capable of bringing an insane level of conditioning and Hunter pushed to almost 300 pounds in this offseason, which is the biggest he has ever been. And it was a very clean looking offseason phase. So he has been practicing those vacuums throughout this offseason even when he was in the 290s range, which means his stomach control will be a lot better this year compared to back in 2023, where Hunter was breathing a little too hard to his stomach against Andrew Jack at Texas Pro. And that was actually one of the main reasons he lost that Texas Pro title. Because according to the judges, when these guys first came out, Hunter was actually in the lead in the first few rounds. So Tampa Pro 2023 was his best luck. But Hunter believes that he can be harder and even drier. And just imagine him bringing that same conditioning or maybe even bad conditioning with an added 5 to 7 pounds on his frame. I think he is going to be a contender for the top 5 this year at the Olympia. But do let me know what's your opinion. So today is the day Portugal Pro is going down. And these two guys, William Bonac and Nathan Diesha, they have made this show really interesting and really engaging because these guys have been posting so many peak peak updates. So different fans have different perspectives on how much updates the athletes should put out. So some people prefer the surprise factor. But the thing is we have seen both William Barnack and Nathan Diesha compete in the last couple of weeks. So it's really logical for both these guys to put as much content out there as they possibly can to increase their following, to hype up the event and of course to earn more money through respective channels. So the most muscular of William Barnack right there gives you a real picture of how this isn't a prime Barnack anymore. Because I know he is still very round and still very bubbly. But just look back at some of his pictures from the Olympia 2017. He was able to bring such a 3D look to the stage. He was looking so comparable to a legend like Phil Heath. And that is how good William Barnack was back in his prime. But the fact that he's still beating guys who are so much younger than him at the tail end of his career, that is just unreal and that is so unbelievable. So how well William Barnack controls his midsection, that is gonna be a crucial factor on whether he is able to secure his second pro win this year. Because if he leaves that door open, Nathan is just gonna take full advantage of that opportunity. So talking about Nathan, he hasn't been able to win the last three shows that he competed in. And if he loses here in Portugal as well, it is gonna be more difficult for him to win the Way Pro because Bejaro Stabani and Rubil Mosquera will be standing in his way there. So do let me know what you guys think. Who is gonna come out on top here? Can Nathan beat William Barnack? And lastly, before we head into Portugal Pro, a last few updates from Stefan, who is one of the biggest attractions here in Portugal. So the biggest advantage that a guy like Stefan had here is that they allowed these guys to make the V8 48 hours before the show. So these guys have plenty of time to fill up their frame and make sure that the carb loading process goes really smoothly. And you guys will be shocked to hear that Stefan is already 3 kgs up from his weight limit. That's kgs, not pounds. And he has been looking better and better with every passing meal. And I have to say no style of training is gonna give you those muscle bellies. Those are just pure genetics. Stefan was born with it. And now that he has found a great coach in his corner, he's ready to showcase his true potential. So if he wins here, he's gonna be making his Olympia debut this year. And that very much puts him in that discussion of cracking top 10 at his first ever Miss Olympia. Now, many of you guys wanna see him go to the men's open bodybuilding. And maybe you guys are right. But as of right now, we have got to appreciate all the hard work these guys have put in, in this prep. So let's see what kind of a look he brings to the stage. And I for one am really pumped to see him back on the stage in Portugal. Next up are a few updates from all the athletes that are going to be competing at Van Pro, which is the next show in line. And it's happening exactly one week from now. So first of all, let's talk about John Jewett, who plays top three in Toronto. You will never see a guy like John miss his mark. And that alone makes him a very strong contender to win this show and get his Olympia qualification. So this recent picture of John in the pool shows you how big he really is. So if we look back at his 212 look, 
versus his current look. He is altogether a different bodybuilder now. Everything is upgraded. The size, the density, the muscle maturity. And all of that was done just within a span of one year. And we have always heard that getting big too fast, that is the biggest mistake these guys can make. Because the biggest risk factor in that is blowing out your waistline, ruining the midsection. But John absolutely nailed it. He has been able to pack on so much size, while his waistline has stayed exactly the same. So next up is the update from Stanimal, the guy who placed second in this same show last year. So you can say lots of things about him not being gifted in terms of his genetics, but you cannot doubt his hard work. His work ethic is second to none. He has been one of the most disciplined guys in the last few years, and Stan has been knocking on the door for quite some time now. Multiple second place finishes. So is this gonna be finally that year, when we get to see Stan on that big stage finally in the men's open? He has done all the hard work, and rest is up to the judges. So if Stan makes it to the Olympia stage, that is gonna be such a great storyline, because here we have a guy who started his career as a men's physique pro. He moved into classic physique, got to the Olympia stage, and now he is trying to qualify for the Olympia in the toughest division out there. So Stan has also made some very significant improvements in the last one year or so. Plus, we know in terms of conditioning, he is always spot on. So do let me know what you guys think. Can Stan win this show? Robin Stan posting these updates of him hitting some shots alongside the defending champion of Van Pro, Hassan Mustafa, the Egyptian tank. So Robin is that guy who was actually able to beat Hassan Mustafa in Toronto, simply because Hassan was just so far off in terms of conditioning. And Robin was absolutely shrunk to the bone. He was peeled out of his mind at that show. But that being said, Hassan is gonna be the guy to beat here still, especially if he comes in shape. He is just way too big and way too muscular for all the competition here. I mean, he is arguably one of the most muscular guy in the men's open class right now. So if he can bring the conditioning, he's still the favorite to win this show. So he was working with Dorian Hamilton for Toronto. So is he still working with him? Hopefully he is. Because out of all the coaches that Hassan has worked with since 2021, AJ Sims has been the only one who was very consistent with him. Chris Asito struggled to bring Hassan in shape. And even last year when he was working with Chad Nichols, even he wasn't consistent with Hassan's conditioning and peaking him right especially in some of the shows, like Orlando Pro, where Hassan just came in way off, and he lost to a guy like Phil Glahar, which was never supposed to happen. And I am pretty sure that this has nothing to do with Hassan's work ethic. That is just a different physique to dial in. Now, logically speaking, Hassan is supposed to improve a lot from his Toronto Pro look, because of these extra few weeks of dieting that he had, post Toronto Pro. But still, I think we are always gonna be a little skeptical on how Hassan is gonna show up. So what do you guys think? Will Hassan be able to successfully defend his title and qualify for the Olympia for the fourth consecutive year in a row? Do let me know in the comments below. And also hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video. And smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.